Hey everybody, um, so this screencast is just for you to take some notes on the idea of momentum. Um, momentum is very powerful in the sense that, especially with collisions, um, it really does allow you an easier access, uh, especially when comparing that to energy, because um, energy in the real world is lost due to heat and sound, like we've talked about in class, um, but with momentum you don't have to worry about that. So, the first thing um, I want you to copy down, and there will be spots in this where I'll just say pause because you have sample problems and whatever, um, is that momentum, it kind of relates to the idea of inertia. Um, remember that an inertia, inertia was the object's tendency to uh, remain in motion or remain in whatever state of motion it was. If it was at rest, it wanted to stay at rest. If it was not, if it was moving, it wanted to keep moving in a straight line. Um, but really what we're doing is adding a number to this idea. It's not just inertia, but it's kind of the number related to inertia. Um, and a lot of physicists define momentum um, as the idea of just simply mass in motion. Um, it's also called sometimes um, the quantity of motion. It kind of gives um, a number to the movement of an object. And we've all heard of the term momentum before, especially with sports. With sports, a team that has momentum um, is they're hard to beat. They're, everything seems to be going their way. Things are moving in a nice direction. They're, they're constantly doing well. Um, so sports momentum is sort of a tendency to be difficult to change the status. A team that's doing well, they have the momentum. They, they are just moving. They're doing well. They are succeeding, they're hard to beat, um, they are just hard to beat, they are just doing well, um, is kind of how it is, it's, they have everything going for them. Um, but in terms of physics, we have an actual availability to call momentum something, um, in terms of the other terms we have, momentum is equal to an object's mass times the object's velocity. Now obviously it would be nice if we could call momentum m, but m is for mass because m times v, so we'll just call it m times v. Um, so the ancient Greek uh, Ancient Greeks, maybe ancient Italian, I don't really remember, it doesn't matter. Um, when they first termed the co uh, coined the term momentum, they actually didn't call it momentum. They called it impetus, impetus, and because of this P, they gave it the symbol P. So this is our very generic equation for momentum. This says momentum equals mass times velocity. And if you remember, going way back, velocity is a speed with direction. So that means that velocity is a vector, which means it matters what direction we're going. That's the one big difference with momentum and energy. Energy doesn't matter in terms of any direction. Momentum, it does. We've got to go back to that north, south, east, west. So that means momentum is also a vector quantity. It needs direction as well, and we'll see how to use that. So in terms of units, sort of separating this, in terms of units of momentum, mass has units of kilograms, velocity has units of meters per second, and when you combine them, momentum would have units of kilograms meters per second. And you know how we've used newtons and joules because they simplify things. There is no simplification for kilogram meters per second. 
So I make one. Um, and this is, I've prefaced this to all of you. I say that one kilogram meter per second, and you can use this in class, equals one recor. So this is our unit for momentum. It's going to be a thing, I promise you. All right. Um, so moving along, just using P equals M times V. Clear that out. We have two sample problems. Um, the first, what is the momentum of a car traveling eastward at 4 meters per second? P equals M times V, 1,000 times 4. That's 4,000 recourse. Um, and we have to have eastward, that's our direction, so really we need 4,000 recourse east. That would be my solution. Um, again, at any point, if you need to pause this, obviously, to copy down the sample problem, it would be worth it. What is the velocity of a 200-kilogram uh, car with a momentum of 50 kilogram meters per second, or 50 recourse? Well, P equals m times v, but we can rewrite that with our circle, P m v. We're solving for v, so it's going to be P over m which is 50 divided by 200, which is going to be 0.25. Um, and the units are going to work out to be the units of velocity, so 0.25 meters per second. All right. <clears throat> um, the real powerful thing coming with, con with momentum is the idea that it, it is conserved. Anywhere in the universe where two objects collide, momentum is always conserved. And there's no, even if you lose energy, like with heat and sound, that doesn't matter. It's purely that the momentum before a collision equals the momentum after a collision. So you have two objects that might be heading toward each other. Each has their own V. V1, V2. This is object 1. So mass 1, mass 2. The momentum before they collide, maybe after they collide they bounce off each other. So that one's going to be going back with some new V. I'm just going to for simplification right now, call it V1 star, um, just because it doesn't really matter. It's still M1, it hasn't lost anything. And M2, maybe bounce back this way, call that V2 star. Again, doesn't really matter, that would be the momentum after. Those two values of everything combined has to be the same. Um, and there are really two different cases that we have to deal with. The two cases for these types of collisions are when we call them inelastic and elastic. Inelastic are when M1 and M2 stick together. And we're going to do sample problems to show you how and why, um, how you deal with this and why um, it matters and why it's a little different than the other case. And elastic, a little bit more tricky, is M1 and M2 bounce off each other. Okay. Um, so bef before, with this one, you had um, different momentum. So for this one, it would obviously be an elastic thing because they didn't stick together. Um, our momentum before, momentum just add, P before just equals the momentum of object 1 plus the momentum of object 2. They're in opposite directions, so you got to take that into account. And it would be M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Um, one of these is going to have a negative value because it's traveling to the left, so we have to deal with that. Um, that would be our momentum before. And again, we'll do sample problems to ex actually show you how all these get put together. The momentum after, for this case, would be, well, the momentum of this. 
So that's m1 v1 star plus the momentum of this, which is m2 v2 star. And again, one is opposite direction, one's traveling to the left. We usually say that the left is the negative value. So you would add those two together, and then you would set everything equal to each other. But let's show how that works with our two different um, types of problems. So pause this as you're going um, to copy it down. We have an inelastic sample. We have a 40 kilogram ball moving eastward um, at 10 meters per second. It strikes a stationary 20 kilogram ball. So let's draw this out. I'm just going to draw them as blocks. Doesn't really matter. So I have a 40 kilogram ball moving eastward at 10 meters per second. Um, it's going to hit a 20 kilogram ball with V2 equals zero. So this would be V1, M1, M2. This is before, and the way we, def we separate before and after is what I do is just a um, dotted line. Afterwards, because they stick together, you don't have them bouncing off each other, so it's M1 and M2. The total mass of that would be M1 plus M2. In this case, 60 kilograms. And they have, since they're moving, they're stuck together, they have to be moving at the same speed. So we'll just call that V. So setting up our momentum before, V before is our M1 V1 plus the momentum of this one, M2 V2, has to equal our momentum after which is m1 plus m2, that's in parentheses, times whatever our v final is. That thing doesn't change. It's exactly the same for both of those. Um, so this is our inelastic equation for conservation of momentum. Always true. Plugging in, you can see 40 times 10 plus 0, because this thing has a 0 speed, um, equals 60 times VF, so that's 400 equals 60 VF, VF equals 400 over 60, 400 over 60 is 6.67, 6.67 meters per second. All right, um, you can work things around and if you know M1 plus M2, you can find M1, you can solve for different things, we'll do those in class. All right, last one is the elastic sample problem. We have a 5,000 kilogram truck moving north at four meters per second. You can read through. Um, so, north, I'm just gonna call this direction is north, just to make the drawing a little easier. You have 5,000 kilograms moving four meters per second. It hits a 4,000 kilogram truck moving south at 6 meters per second. That's our before, our after, they collide. The 5,000 moves south, so that's this way, at 2 meters per second, 5,000. And the other one, 4,000. We're not sure whether it's going that way or that way. We're going to find out. So, our momentum before, well, that's 5,000 times 4, which is going to be 20,000 recourse. Um, it's moving north, so we're going to call that positive. This one's moving south, so minus 6 times 4,000 is 24,000. Again, we have a not minus here because it's moving to the left. We need to include that. So our total P before is minus 4,000 when you subtract those two. That has to equal our total P after of um, well, this is going to be negative 10,000, 2 times 5,000, plus 4,000, it's going to, we're not sure, 4,000 times V. So we have this equation we need to solve for. I'm going to add 10,000, so that's going to be um, negative 4,000 plus 10,000 will be 6,000 equals 4,000 V. I'm going to get a V of positive, it's going to come out positive, 6,000 over 4,000, which is going to be a V of positive 1.5 meters per second, so that means it's 